Hello and welcome to the second video, well I guess it's the third, but really the second video in the uh, libgdx how to make a video game tutorial. We're building a uh, like space shooter kind of game, arcade game. So in the last video uh, we set up the project um, and we drew the background as well as the ship to the screen and we made the ship automatically adjust based on what the screen size is to position itself in the middle of the screen. So let's just run that and see where we were. So you can hear it's here. You can see here's the ship, and it's positioned in the center of the screen, and there's the background. So what we're going to do this time is we're going to add movement to the ship, and then maybe um, start on or add bullets depending on how long it takes, because I, I never really know. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to create a new method. Um, so in object-oriented programming, you have things called uh, methods, and um, Methods are, are similar to uh, the like the the way I kind of like I think about them in kind of two different ways. So one is that that's kind of like a paragraph in your essay that is this program, right? It's one little section has one purpose and it, it kind of expresses one idea, right? So for example, here's here's a method right here, and this is the render method. You can see its name here, and all it does is it's rendering to the screen. It's drawing all this stuff to the screen. It could do more, but that's my render. Like just like any paragraph, you could put in more ideas, but you try to keep organized by you know having this paragraph talking about this, this talking about this. So this is a paragraph that is written specifically just to render stuff to the screen. And now I'm going to make a method that is specifically for updating stuff. So um, this render method is by default, as I talked about last time, is by default called once per frame, right? And um, let's just pretend that it runs at 60 frames per second, right? So this method is called 60 times per second, and all of this code in here is run 60 times per second. Um, but now I'm going to make a new one update. And this one I also want to run 60 times per second, but it's just going to be stuff that's updating in the background, like checking for key presses and stuff, not necessarily rendering to the screen, because that'll be done in the render method. Um, the other thing that's cool about methods is that uh, you can you can call them, right? So it's kind of like you have this tool now, and at any point you can call the update method and you can run all that code in there. And the reason this is important is that uh, by default, right, the render method is called 60 times per second, but this update method that I just made is not. So what we're going to do is we're going to call the update method from within the render method. So now every time the render method is called, it's going to call update. And what this is saying is, okay, now do all the code that's in here. Um, you're also noticing that it starts with public void. Um, this is uh, the like the visibility of the method as well as its return type. And I'll explain more um, what that is as we go on. Um, but for now, just know that if you want to make a new method, you can just start with public void, then put the name, and then these two parentheses. And then at any point, you can call it from elsewhere in your code. And I'll do a little example of a smaller method later on. Um, as well as in uh, further videos, I'll, I'll explain in more depth what all these things mean. So uh, now we have our update method. So what we want to do in this update method is we want to check for um, check when the user presses a key and then react on that key press, right? So in some programming, uh, the way it works is there's a key press and then something happens, right? And it's it's like related that way. So when you make an app, it's oftentimes like that. You have a button and you have methods associated with that button so that when you click the button, that method's run. But the way most games work is that, you know, the code is just running 60 times per second. So instead of reacting to a key press, you're constantly reacting and then checking to see if there is a key press, if that kind of makes sense. So um, it, it, the way I like to think of it is as opposed to hitting a button and something happening, you're running around like I like to envision a little man running around a room, right? And he's looking to see if any levers have been hit in that in that room since he's been there. And he looks and he sees, oh, levers have been pressed. Now I'm going to go do something as opposed to he's just sitting there. Someone hits a lever, then he automatically does. I, I don't know. That's how I like to think of it. So it's like you're constantly checking to see if something's changed. That's kind of how you have to think about it. So in this case, um, in my update method, I'm going to be checking um, to see if the up arrow has been hit or the down arrow or the left or the right arrow has been hit at any point in time. Right. So we're going to do that is with four if statements. So if GDX dot um, I think it's input dot uh, what is it? It's input dot is key pressed. Okay, input dot is key pressed keys dot up. 
And one thing um, you may notice this isn't working at first, you actually have to import column.badlogic.ddx input.keys in order to get that working there. So do that. So um, all this is doing is it's saying if the up arrow is pressed, then do what's in between these two curly brackets, right? So I'm going to say if the input is pressed, then remember that ship location vector we made? So I'm going to modify the y value of it if the key is pressed equals the current ship location dot y plus five. Okay, so let's try that out. So this is saying if it's pressed, then the ship location dot y equals what it formerly was, formerly was plus five. So let's save this file and run it. So I'm going to press the up key. Um, boom. There he goes. One issue arriving is he's going off the screen, right? So we're actually going to fix that as well later on. Um, so this is a way I've been showing you how to do how to um, increase an integer previously is that you take the variable and then um, you uh, set it equal to what it was plus five. The shorthand for doing that, which I think I'll show you now, is you say plus equals five. So that's basically taking that whole code. It's just taking take this number here and increase it by five. So it's just taking that long code there that's kind of annoying to write and compressing it to one statement because you end up doing that a lot. Okay, so now we're going to do the same thing for all the directions. So I'm just going to copy and paste this four times. Boom, boom. Okay, so this one I'll make for going down. Keys dot down. And instead of increasing the y value by five, I'm going to subtract it by five. Here I will do right. And now, uh, so now this one will be with right. So I'll make this add five to the x value. And here I'll change this to left. And I'll make this modify the x value as well, but now in the negative direction. So now if I save this and run it, here I am hitting the up key, the down key, the right key, and the left key. Here's right enough at the same time. You get the idea. So now I have full control of my spaceship, which is very nice. But there's an issue in that I can go off the screen, right? And that's no good. So let's figure that out. So one easy way to do this is every time um, you go up, only go up five if there's room to do that, right? So you could do that by checking the height of the screen, your current screen, checking the location of the ship, and seeing if you have room to go up. So um, for now, let's just put another if statement here. So I'll say, if you're hitting the up key, then if um, ship location dot y is less than the screen height. All right, let's just try that. Um, there we go. So if you're heading up, and if your ship location is less than the screen height, then let's go up. So let's see what happens there. So I go up. Oh, I still went off the screen, right? And the reason for that is that when you're drawing to the screen, uh, its reference location for like drawing that object is the bottom left corner. I guess this is left for you. It is it's the bottom left corner. So when it's drawing a ship at point zero zero, right? It, when we we drew the ship originally there, it put a bang in the bottom left corner of the screen, which worked out really nicely. But if I check to see if it's less than the screen height, it's actually able to go all the way up here above the screen, because that's that's it's bottom by that's when the bottom left corner is higher than it than the than the screen height, if that makes sense. So what we need to do is then subtract the height of the ship so that it's right below the edge of the screen instead of right above it. So we'll say its ship location is less than the screen height minus the ship height. Minus ship dot get height. Okay. Let's see how it looks now. And bang, much better. And you'll notice that it, it still has a little bit of room there, you know? There's like a little gap. And the reason is that it's probably like this image size, I bet is a square. And it's, it's a little wider than it is tall. So if you wanted, you could mess with it a little bit so that it doesn't, like it hits right up. But I think it looks kind of nice with that little bit of space there. So I'm just gonna leave it as is. <coughs> okay, um, 
Now I'm going to teach you another little trick that I haven't shown you before. So this, um, because I'm checking two things right now, I'm checking to see if it's up and if it's less than the screen height, I'm having to do two if statements inside each other, which looks really gross. So one thing you can do instead of that is you can use this thing, um, you can do an if and statement. So uh, the way you do that is you do and and, two and symbols, and then your next statement. So it, it works the same way, but both of these statements, this one and this one, it need to be true. And I can put like infinite of these. So if I did that, then this would never get hit, right? Because it would say, oh, this one's false. And that's why I underlies in yellow, actually, because that's unreachable code detected and Eclipse likes to show that to you. But um, what we can do is we can copy all of this here or cut it put it in place of here and then I like to put parentheses around things so it looks a little cleaner apparently can't type them okay so if ship location dot y is less than the screen height minus the ship height right and you're hitting up then do what's in here And I think this just looks a little cleaner, right? One thing that I might do is take this here and store it in a variable just so that you can have just one little less than statement and you might want to do that. But for now, I'll just leave it. So we can check this again and you'll see that it acts the same way. But now I don't have two nested. They call that nested when you have one inside another if statements and it just looks a little nicer. Um, so now we can do the same thing for the down statements. I'll say um, if you're hitting down and ship location dot y is greater than zero. So for this one, because it's measuring by the bottom left corner, I don't need to subtract the ship height because if it's greater than zero, that's that's the bottom of the screen right there. So let's run it again. Now I stop at the bottom of the screen and I stop at the top of the screen, but I can still go off the left and the right. I'm not going to go all the way over there though. Okay, so now we'll do right. So say and location dot x is less than screen width and here how did I mistyped ship location and here we have the same issue as before because it's that bottom left corner again right so now when I go to the right it's gonna go right past the edge of the screen and then stop right past so you we have to again um, subtract this time though the ship width so if it's less than the screen width with minus ship dot to get width and do that and that makes that look a lot nicer let's do that here okay so ship dot get width and then let's just do the left one while we're at it too and this one is simple again it's just if greater than zero right because it's doing that bottom left corner is greater than zero so now I'll save and run this and now I can't go off the left can't go off the bottom, can't go off there. All my corners are working, which is really nice. Um, so there you have it. So now you know how to handle input. So at any point you could also, you know, just say if gdx dot input dot is key pressed, keys dot, you know, anything you have, oops. Keys dot a apostrophe, um, comma, control D. I mean, all the keys of the keyboard, right? So now you can react to whatever they're doing. And in the next video, I think I think we'll move the shooting to the next video just to keep these easier to view. Um, you know, we'll react probably to the space bar being hit. Um, one thing that's interesting is there's there's two different methods. So this is just checking to see if the key is pressed. So it's actually adding five to the ship location like 60 times per second, right? And that's why you have that smooth movement. But at sometimes you want to react to just once when it's hit, right? You don't want to continually do it. Like if you're firing a gun and you want them to have to mash the A button a ton, right? So in that case, what you can do is say dot is key just pressed. Um, and in this case, um, it'll only move up once now. Um, and I can hit it. And now I'm still holding the key, right? Well, you can't see. Let me show you. So um, here, 
where I'm hitting it once, but now it's moving. Whereas the other ones, I can hold that key and move it around and it keeps going. But this one only reacts once. So that's really helpful for um, like doing menu presses, any sort of enter key press, right? You don't want to continually accept that. You only want to check once. So it's nice that that's built into the engine. That's actually somewhat new. You used to have to like deal with it and check to see if it had just been pressed and stuff. So there you go. There's how to handle basic input. Um, maybe we'll also do like mouse stuff later, but that should get you started for sure, as well as a little intro to what a method is. Um, so I'll see you all in the next video. Uh, we're going to work on doing bullets, which will involve an array to keep track of all your bullets and everything. So it'll be a cool um, little tutorial next one. All right. See you guys on Wednesday.